Hello, um, we're going to continue our mathematics videos on how to solve um, ordinary differential equations. Now, um, in past videos, we've looked at um, nonlinear um, ordinary differential equations, uh, I think both first and second order, and, and we've, um, we've um, analysed how to solve those, and we've also analysed how to solve linear ordinary differential equations with non-constant variable coefficients. Equations like this one up here. So we're going to continue with another example where we have y double prime plus 2x y prime plus 2y equals 0. Now the question is asked, um, show that y equals c e to the minus x squared is a solution to this ordinary differential equation in equation one and then find the general solution. So we're asked to prove that y equals c e to the minus x squared is a solution to this or at least solves this left hand side and equates it to zero when we substitute back into the equation this along with both its first and second derivatives. So we're now going to um, make a start. So we'll, we'll write down y equals c e to the minus x squared. And y prime is quite simply um, the derivative of this, which hopefully you should, um, you should know reasonably well, which is minus 2cx e to the minus x squared. And... Um, then we have to find uh, y double prime, the second derivative. And if you differentiate this again, um, you find that you've got minus 2c e to the minus x squared um, plus 4c x squared e to the minus x squared. Okay, so what we now need to do is to substitute this expression here back in for y prime here this expression here back in for y prime there and y equals c e to the minus x squared back into y here so we substitute that back in for y double prime that in for y prime and that in for y so the left hand side uh, we'll just write this out again the equation y double prime plus 2xy prime uh, plus 2y. So the left hand side is equal to this first of all, minus 2ce to the minus x squared plus 4cx squared e to the minus x squared um, plus 2x times y prime, which is minus 2cx e to minus x squared. And then we have on the end two times uh, this expression here, which is just plus 2c e to the minus x squared. And if we just simplify that we get that the left hand side is equal to minus 2ce um, to the minus x squared um, plus 4cx squared e to the minus x squared um, minus because 2x times minus 2cx e to the minus x squared is just 4cx squared e to the minus x squared, or minus anyway, minus 4cx squared e to the minus x squared, and then we've got this term on the end, plus 2c e to the minus x squared. Okay, so um, what, what can I deduce from the right-hand side of this expression? Well, we can see that that cancels with that, and that cancels with that. So we're left with LHS equal to zero. So 
y equals c e to the minus x squared is a solution. to equation one, okay? So that is a solution to that because when you substitute that and all its derivatives back into that equation and work everything out algebraically, that left-hand side is just zero. Now, previously, to find the general solution, we used the Ronskian method, which um, has two forms. There's a determinant matrix method of um, working out the Ronskian, and there's the uh, an exponential version of it. And of course, you equate the two to obtain an ordinary differential equation, and therefore solve for y two. Now, I'm going to sidestep using the um, Ronskian. I'm not going to use Ronskian. I'm just going to launch straight in to using um, a formula that will help us obtain y2 straight away. And that is y2 is equal to y1 times the integral of e to the minus of the integral p dx, all divided by y1 squared dx. Um, now, y1 is c e to the minus x squared because that's our first solution which is what that is um what is p well you might remember from previous videos that p is actually equal to this plus 2x term this variable term here which is plus 2x so all we need to do now is substitute uh, ce to the minus x squared in for y1, ce to the minus x squared, um, multiplied by the integral of e to, to the power minus the integral of 2x dx, uh, divided by y1 squared, which is just this squared here, um, so I'll write that in, ce to the minus x squared, all squared, and then of course we have a dx term there. Now if you simplify this, you get y2 is equal to e to the minus x squared over c, because you can take the constant c out, that becomes c squared, e to the minus 2x squared, uh, but you can take a c out and cancel it with that leaving you with just e to the minus x squared over c, times the integral, well, e to the minus, e to the power minus the integral of 2x just becomes e to the minus x squared. Uh, we have a dx term there, and in the denominator we just have this e to the minus x squared all squared, which is e to the minus 2x squared. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and work out y2. So we've got y2 is equal to e to the minus x squared over c. And I'm going to put square brackets around this. Uh, because there's a constant involved as well. So this is e to the minus x squared e to the 2x squared. You bring the e to the minus 2x squared up into the numerator. Um, the minus 2x squared turns to plus 2x squared as here. And we've got a dx term, close brackets. Now y2 is equal to e to the minus x squared over c. That just stays the same for now. Multiplied by the integral of, well, this is, you just use the laws of indices here. Um, so 2x squared minus x squared is just x squared. So it's e to the 
x squared dx. Right? So we've got, actually, um, we, we've got a simplified version of the solution now, but this is rather difficult. In fact, it's impossible to integrate. So we, we have to do what we did in the previous two or so videos and use error functions uh, to work out the integral of this. Now, if you're familiar, again, with my previous videos and um, if you're familiar with anything to do with error functions or imaginary error functions or the complementary error function, you will know how to write that down straight away. So that becomes e to the minus x squared over c times, well, the error function for this is just simply the square root of pi. Um, if that had been x squared over 2, it would have been the root of pi divided by the square root of 2. But because it's only 1, the square root of 1 is just 1, uh, and, and you don't need to write it down. So we've got pi times uh, the imaginary error function of x plus a constant. And we'll call that constant 1. So we're nearly there. We're nearly there for the... Um, in fact, you could leave it like that. That is basically the um, um, the second linearly independent solution. So we'll just leave it in that form now without multiplying um, all of this in brackets by the e to the minus x squared over c. And um, we'll just um, find the general solution, which should be hopefully a simple matter. Now, the general solution, the general solution is y equals y1 plus y2. Well, we know what y1 is because that is c e to the minus x squared. So we've got y equals c e to the minus x squared. And we've got y2 as well, which is this expression here, e to the minus x squared over c times the root of pi, the imaginary error function of x plus c1. Um, so we'll, we'll write that down. Um, and I'm actually going to um, expand uh, these brackets. So I'm going to multiply all of this out so that we get e to the minus x squared over c times the root of pi imaginary error function of x um, plus um, c1 over c e to the minus x squared. So um, We've found a general solution, but we just need to tidy it up. And that general solution is y1, which is that, plus y2, which is e to the minus x squared over c times root of pi times the error fun imaginary error function of x plus c1 over c e to the minus x squared. Now, as it happens, um, this constant term here, gets absorbed into this first solution here. Um, and the reason is that if you add that and that together, you get y equals c plus c1 over c, all times e to the minus x squared. And then of course we've got this term here, plus root of pi over c, e to the minus x squared times the imaginary error function x. Um, we can just call this any um, constant that we like. So why don't we go for capital A? So we've got y equals A, where A equals c plus c1 over c. So that's A e to the minus x squared plus b 
times the root of pi e to the minus x squared times the imaginary error function of x, where b is equal to 1 over c. And that basically is the general solution to equation 1. And um, I'm not going to go into exactly what the error function or the imaginary error function uh, means or looks like on a graph. Um, we'll have to leave that to another, things like that to another video. Uh, but so long as you know how to get to the general solution, then uh, you'll be flying, as it were, uh, and then you can go from there. But that's basically how to solve an equation like that. They, they're not all solvable. I formed that equation so that um, I was able to solve it reasonably um, fluently, albeit with an error function at the end. Uh, but you can't always find solutions to these types of equations. If we hadn't had a 2 in there, um, we wanted to solve that equation, it would have been a lot harder, if not impossible. But I chose to put a 2 in there so that we could find um, a solution to the equation. Otherwise, it probably wouldn't have worked. So some equations work, but a lot don't. Um, and you, you, you just have to play around with some of them and hopefully um, then you will get somewhere. Um, so I hope you've, um, uh, again, enjoyed that lecture and that you've got something out of it, and that you've learned something and that you will come back um, uh, for more videos, including the past videos I've made as well as futuristic ones. And until then, I'll bid you farewell and bye-bye uh, for now.